ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official top 10 underrated college football stadiums of 2023, where I go through my top 10 and talk about some stadiums that I do think aren't talked about a lot. You know, it could be a number of different reasons. Maybe the team is not good, so the stadium never hosts big games. Maybe it's an FCS stadium. We're going to go through my top 10, beginning with number 10, and it is the Yale Bull. Yes, I love the way this stadium is built directly, like, into the ground, and you can kind of see the grass going up. Like, when you walk up to the stadium, it's just so unique because it's partially built into the ground. And you also do have a decent capacity with the Yale Bowl. Really good, especially for Ivy League. But I do think this stadium, I mean, imagine a world where Yale was actually a good team and they could easily expand it and add on more seating and add on suites and things like that. It's pretty crazy to think about, but just its location in Connecticut, I really do like it. So the Yale Bowl kind of frozen in time. It looks virtually identical as it did in the early 1900s, like most Ivy League stadiums. I do like it. And it comes in at number 10 on my underrated stadiums, obviously. I mean, has College Game Day ever went to the Yale Bowl? They should go there once. It's a very nice stadium. Uh, moving on to number 9, it is Falcon Stadium, uh, home of Air Force. Now, this stadium... I don't know if Air Force is going to be hosting a big game this year, but I do think they're probably going to be undefeated late in the season and a top 25 team. Amazing location for this stadium, and it is getting a huge renovation, which is going to make it better. But this stadium, it's not right next to a mountain range, but it's near one, and you can kind of see the mountains in the outskirts of it. It's just a great vibe. And Air Force, you know, the Colorado air, where it's located... I don't know. I really like it. When it comes to the actual stadium itself, I mean, let's be honest, you can tell the thing needs to be renovated. Kind of an old design there, but I just like the location. And then obviously, nobody really talks about Air Force. I'm sure a lot of college fo football fans don't even know the stadium name. Yes, it is Falcon Stadium. It's a pretty cool name, uh, but Air Force for me comes in at number nine in most underrated stadiums, mainly due to its location, and especially once it gets the renovation it's going to be very underrated. Moving on to number eight, it is McLean Stadium. So relatively new one here, home of Baylor. This one's about 10 years old at this point. Baylor moving out of their old stadium, kind of surprising. Normally we see college teams just renovate their old stadium over and over and over again, but Baylor built an entirely new one but Baylor did decide to build a brand new one right next to water. It's a very nice vibe. The stadium itself kind of looks like a horseshoe, but they did surprisingly leave one of the end zones open on purpose. I would imagine if Baylor would have been, you know, this great team like they were in 2014, 2015 with Art Bryles and Bryce Petty, if they would have continued on that trajectory, they might have done a renovation where they would have closed the entire stadium off and put more seats in. But because Baylor's kind of fallen off, I mean, they had a few good years. Matt Rule turned them around, but right now they're kind of like a 500 Big 12 team. That end of the stadium is still completely open. I guess it does a good job in terms of last Letting, you know, one side of the stadium breathe. But normally when you're talking about building a new stadium, you're going to want to build the entire thing. You know, you're not going to leave one of the ends open. So that is kind of surprising. But I do like the exterior and it's just so unique to see a college team, especially a power five team, build a brand new stadium. It almost never happens. Again, it's normally just renovating the old stadium and the stadium, it, it, it does present itself well from the outside and from aerial shots. It's very solid. It's got smaller sections. That's kind of the approach they took. So even if Baylor's not doing too well, they're not selling out. You're not dealing with looking at a grotesque, massive wall of empty seats because they are smaller sections. But ba you want to know another thing about Baylor? It always seems like they play 11 a.m. home games. It really does. I mean, I do remember that one game. I think Oklahoma had Jalen Hurts. Remember, Baylor was destroying Oklahoma. That was a night game. And then Oklahoma, they were winning like 34-7. to And that was when I really didn't like Oklahoma. I was honestly rooting against them 
uh, and Jalen Hurts came back and won that game. That was with Lincoln Riley. That was a joke. Uh, but yeah, this is a solid stadium, and it does get relatively loud. Also, they do have a nice little overhang to protect some of the fans from... I mean, I guess it would be more so the sun being in Texas. They don't get much precipitation there, but it is kind of strange that they decide they just have a grass area behind the one end zone. I mean, this was just built. Either way, it comes in at number eight. At number seven, it is Harvard Stadium, the Coliseum. Yes, I love Harvard Stadium. It is frozen in time. There's been no renovations or no crazy renovations to it for the last like 70 or 80 years. It's funny because they used to have it fully closed off and there was a bigger capacity but they've since removed all of those seats from the one end zone so now it just looks like a giant horseshoe similar to Ohio Stadium without the student section level and then obviously without the upper deck imagine a renovation out of this thing though I mean the exterior of it you can see uh, the columns it does look like the little arches a Roman Coliseum very very cool if they ever decided to expand on this obviously they're not going to because it is Harvard they're not going to draw that that much outside of the Harvard Yale annual rivalry but I do think it is a very cool stadium you can see how it loops around it doesn't really fit perfectly but that's kind of the charm of it I mean it's very very old and it hasn't received any major renovations so Harvard Stadium comes in at number seven at number six it's Kid Brewer Stadium this is home of Appalachian State so the reason this is here well there's actually a few different reasons number one obviously location it's located right next to a forest, rolling hills, mountainous terrain. I love the contrast of stadiums when they're right next to a dense forest. I just love that. And then also, this is a stadium that has received several renovations over the past 10 to 15 years, including a nice new end zone renovation. But obviously, when you look at aerial photos of this stadium, and especially Appalachian State's baseball stadium, basically fully surrounded by a forest, when the leaves turn and you know, fall hits, it is gorgeous. It, it, it's unbelievable. That's why, I mean, imagine App State was ranked like in the top 10 and college game day went there when the leaves were turning. I mean, that would just be crazy, but it is a solid stadium. It's mainly on this list though because of the location and it is Kid Brewer Stadium. A lot of people probably don't even know that. That is the name of the stadium. It comes in at number six. At number five, it is the Sun Bowl. Uh, that's the name of it and that's what it hosts because it does host a bowl that that's called the Sun Bowl. You can take a look at it basically right within the side of a mountain. Really sweet location. It gets a ton of sun. And it, it the seating configuration kind of reminds me of a smaller lane stadium. Although it is fully closed off just looking at it. There's really nothing special about the seating. It's more so the location where it is and the sun beating down onto the stadium. You know, I think the Sun, was it the Sun Bowl or another one? Wasn't there a 10 a.m. game played there? I don't know if it was a, the Sun Bowl that was played at 10 a.m., but there was a game, I vividly remember it. It might not have been at the Sun Bowl. You know what, guys? I'm not sure. Well, now, you know what? We've got 10 a.m. games happening all over the place with Big Noon going to Colorado every week. But I do remember there was a college football game that was 10 a.m. local time, and it blew my mind. I'm like, what are we doing? The, you can literally see the shadows on the field, but it's not because the sun's going down. It's because the sun's coming up. What are we doing here? It's crazy. But no, this stadium is very nice. The location of it, you know, you, you walk like a half a mile out, outside of it and it's just nothing. That's always cool. So the Sun Bowl doesn't get a lot of love. It comes in at number five and it hosts UTEP home games. Of course, UTEP's been completely irrelevant recently, so it's not going to get much love. At number four, it is Boone Pickens Stadium. So yeah, this is on basically everyone's list when it comes to underrated stadiums. When you look at it on the interior, it doesn't necessarily present amazing, but it has a beautiful, brick exterior and even the interior of it it's there's no upper deck to it it's just a massive bowl you know going all the way around outside of that one end zone and then you kind of have two or three sections of suites and club seating on top of that super unique there's not another stadium that's designed like this in college football and they do have a great home atmosphere when it comes to their one end zone where, where there's no seating, I'm not the biggest fan of that design. It's, it is a literal building, which is kind of cool because you can look out through those windows and stuff, but just the way they have it set up, the building really doesn't fit. 
Now, obviously, they're really not going to renovate it because that would cost so much money, literally knocking down that building and then rebuilding up entire like an entire custom fit seating area to close off the stadium. But uh, that's what I would do, honestly, because I'm not a big fan of that building, kind of the way it, it just doesn't fit within the stadium at all. It seems like it's, it's its own unit. And I'm not a fan of that when it comes to stadiums, but Boone Pickens is beautiful and it does get extremely loud and the design of it being a lower bowl, uh, especially for Oklahoma State, you know, Oklahoma State, they're not a huge school, but they're also big enough to where you do need a bigger stadium. So really good design there at number four. At number three, it is Nippert Stadium, home of Cincinnati, very small stadium, but they did a great job on this design and they recently renovated it. I just love the way this stadium fits into the campus of Cincinnati. It seems like based on how big it is, it just fits like a glove and the expansion they recently did, the new suites they put up, to me, they look beautiful. It's a stadium that's virtually always going to sell out because of its lower capacity, but it also has the ability to get very loud. Cincinnati, they had their run a few years ago where they made the playoff. They had some big time home games here, I think against uh, UCF where it got very loud. It is a place that can get raucous even with the low capacity. And again, even when Cincinnati's bad, it's not like you're dealing with tons of empty seats because they've limited the capacity down to about you know under 50,000. It's one of the 10 smallest stadiums in the Power 5 level right now. And it comes in at number three on underrated stadiums just based off of the way it's built in, the shape of it, it fits. And it comes off very clean to me and easily digestible. Moving on to number two, it is Mitchie Stadium. Yes, home of Army. And this stadium, I just love the location of it being right on the water. And then the other side, you've got the beautiful contrast of a straight forest area. It, 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 you're really not going to see that with any other team when it comes to college football stadiums now. The stadium itself, this is another one, just like Air Force, it's getting a big time renovation. It was just announced. Army, I believe, is going to be joining the American Conference. They're going from being an independent. That should be announced at some point as well. But just the stadium and the location of it, very low key. It pre presents extremely well. And then the beautiful contrast surrounded by water on the one side. And then you do have a forest area kind of going around it. I really like that one. It comes in at number two on underrated stadiums. And then at number one, it is Federal Credit Union Stadium home of Louisville, believe it or not. So this is probably the most irrelevant, bigger stadium in college football. I seriously have rarely ever heard this stadium get talked about, and it's just a cool design behind one of the end zones, the way it kind of arches up. It's got one upper deck, you know, it's got a bigger lower bowl. The only thing that I don't like about it is the overhang. The white overhang on the one side is really obnoxious. It doesn't look very good, but yeah, this is a bigger stadium that gets extremely loud, and no one really talks about it. So it's kind of interesting to see that, but I think it's very underrated. And believe it or not, you know, Louisville is hosting Notre Dame this week, so we'll see how loud it actually gets. But I do like this stadium. And also you have the bright red seats to match the color. You've kind of got the seating design in the one end zone to match the logo. It just looks really cool to me. And, and nobody talks about it, literally no one. It is a bigger stadium, but it is kind of irrelevant when it comes to college football. And it's also relatively new, and they've recently done renovations. This thing opened in 1998. So for a college football stadium, that's very new just to build a brand new stadium. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.